Hey, ladies, and welcome back to another episode of the Girl Boss Method podcast. I am your host, Richu Bra, and I'm joined here again by our wonderful co host, Daniela Del Carpio. So Daniela is also a an online fitness coach and her business is called the DDC Fitness. Um, so Daniela, thank you for joining us again. Um, how's your day been so far? Hi, Richie. No, thank you for having me again. I mean, as you guys know, this is going to be a weekly thing every single Tuesday, New Zealand time and Monday UK time. We're going to be doing recording this podcast. But my day has been great. I went to the gym this morning, did some arms and cardio, went home. I mean, got home, showered, changed, did some work. And now we're here filming this podcast, which is also going to be available on YouTube. So make sure to check it out on YouTube as well. And what are we going to be talking about today, Richu? So today's topic, because we're sort of coming into, well, we're coming out of autumn and towards winter, we have two months exactly until mm. the end of the year what happens before the end of the year we have christmas what happens in the lead up to christmas especially when it comes to staying on track with our fitness you know prior to christmas itself so yeah that's basically what we're talking about today um so yeah i guess the first thing that we want to think about daniela mm -hmm is between now and then is there anything that you find gets in the way of your clients and their and their goals yeah I feel like the main thing right now for them it's social events because obviously with Christmas approaching it's literally a few two I mean less than two months there's going to be Christmas party at work. There's going to be Christmas party or reunions with your friends, with your family. And there's just so many events coming up. And I know that's something that my cast, my customers, my clients have told me because they're really afraid that all these events, you know, all this food, all this alcohol is going to ruin the progress that they are making. It's mm -hmm. going to, you know, it, all the hard work they've been doing for the past few weeks, for the past few months, it's just going to go to waste because they really think that enjoying this time, it's going to make them do exactly that. Throw that progress away. And I think something that we can talk about, we're going to talk about right now, it's like how you can deal with those situations, especially with having so many social events around this time of the year. So ensure that you can stay on track and then at the same time, enjoy those social events because we don't want you guys to stop being social. We don't want you guys to stay at home and do absolutely nothing and say no to everyone because that's not the way you want to live your life. Something we always right. mention on this podcast is like, this is a lifestyle this is not a quick fix. This is not just you getting ready for summertime because in New Zealand, it's summertime very, very soon. This is not just getting ready for a special event. This is pretty much, this is getting ready for life because it's a lifestyle. So let's start sharing some tips to help you da do exactly that. And I've, I'm going to start because I've got one right here in the top of my mind. I think the first mm -hmm. one is for you to decide what exactly do you want to do the next few weeks? Like, are you someone that wants to stay on track? Or are you someone that just wants to enjoy everything, enjoy the whole day season, enjoy those social events and not worry about anything and then go back, get back on track next year? And the reason why I say this is because I feel like there's two different types of people right now. You might have the mindset of, yeah, I want to stay on track, but you also might have the mindset of, I want to take a little break. I want to, I want this time to be just some time to enjoy with my friends, with my family. And I know next year, you know, New Year's resolution, I want to put my, set my new goals and then jump back on track as soon as 2024 comes in. I feel like if you have that mindset, you want to give yourself a break. Maybe you are approaching this fitness lifestyle in the wrong direction or in the wrong way. Because if you're thinking about taking a break, then whatever you're doing, maybe it's too strict. Maybe you are restricting yourself too much that you feel the need to take this break. You feel the need to take this time off, quote unquote, time off, from the nutrition that you're doing, from the meal plan that you're following, from the training, because maybe it's getting too much. So maybe that's something you need to ask yourself. Like, am I being too strict with what I'm doing? Am I really enjoying what I'm doing? Do I really need to take this break? Because I feel mm. like that's a mindset that, I'm not saying everyone, but I know some people are having right now. But what are your thoughts about this, Richu? Like, what do you think about those people that maybe right now, if you're listening and you're thinking, I just want to take a break, enjoy it and not have to worry about anything at all? 
I think there's a risk in that. And so I was talking um, actually on some prior episodes as well about this, because I feel like it's definitely a running theme right now. Mm. This definitely is the time of year where people start to take a back seat. They decide that they're going to start in January and the risk with that is if they have spent a long time in like let's say a calorie deficit they've spent long hard months you know working towards a weight loss or fat loss goal and they decide to completely switch off the risk with that is you know in some ways there could be some undoing Mm. and I use that quite loosely that term because we haven't had the chance to really get that client into or you haven't if you're listening to this and that's been you you haven't had the chance to really get into what we call like a maintenance phase and I think that's like heavily important when it comes to your fitness journey because within that we are still keeping you know you're enjoying yourself um, you know, you're you're able to to have the social flexibility, um, but also in terms of your mindset, you haven't, you know, gone from restriction and straight into overindulgence, mm. and that's unfortunately where we get the undoing. And this time of year, we know that exclusively this is where most people end up putting on more weight. So although they've done, you know, some dieting and they've been in a deficit and they've made some amazing progress, they come into this phase and they think, well, I've reached my goal. This is, this is perfect. And they switch off and then they start January from day one again. Mm. And that's where the risk lies. Would you agree? I agree 100%. And I, I like how you say this switch off. Because they literally have this switch. Well, it seems like they have this switch in their brain. It's like, okay, I'm going to switch off right now. I'm going to enjoy this holiday. I'm going to, I feel like they already know, like, I'm going to put on weight. And that's okay. Because next year is going to come around and I'm going to start with everything again. But why Mm. do you do that to yourself? You're only making it more challenging for yourself. You're only making it harder for you to get started. You're only making it harder for you to make this a lifestyle. Something we always say as, as well is like, Fitness is not just about losing weight and gaining muscle mass and looking more toned and looking mm. more sexy. Yes, it's obviously part of that, but it's more about taking control of your life, taking control of the things that you are doing, taking control of your nutrition or on your, of your training because it's more a mindset thing. It's not just about looking pretty. It's more about how you feel on the inside. How does exercise makes you feel? Like after you finish your workout or after you go for a run, how do you feel? I'm pretty sure the answer is going to be happy. You feel like you have released all that stress, all that anger, all that frustration that maybe you had before going doing your workout or going for that run. So that's something for you to think about because mm-hmm. that switch that you have right now, there's something that needs to change because I think you're looking at fitness in the wrong direction, in the wrong way. And this is just not going to help you long term because right now you have to think about long term, not just about the next 12 or eight weeks. It's what's going to happen in the next few months, in the next few years, is this going to be a cycle that's going to keep repeating every single year? I make amazing progress from January until October, and then from October or November, December, I go back to square one, and then I do again. It's like taking yeah. a few steps forward and then going a few steps back. Yeah. yeah. And then also, there's always that, you know, that situation where people are are constantly in that idea of you know we get these people women unfortunately some of us have been sucked into this from a young age but the the constant diet Mm -hmm. rabbit you know the the hamster on the wheel constantly chasing 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 diet after diet after restriction after you know quick goal and I think the really important thing here is lifestyle is the key and consistency Mm -hmm. is the key. And it's allowing ourselves to rather than looking for that instant gratification constantly, you know, where we constantly aim for, you know, getting those, those, seeing those numbers drop on the scales and whatever it is. Look, we want to enjoy this time of year, but there are strategies and there are tactics in terms of how to get that without, you know, going backwards and taking backwards step you know there Mm. are ways that we can 
we can create some awareness around nutrition we can create you know um, variety and flexibility within our workouts I know that this time of year gets quite busy for people Mm -hmm. and often when we're thinking about Christmas you mentioned this before there are work parties there are you know mini vacations or holidays before actual Christmas as well the the social calendar starts to really fill up and now if you haven't spent that time building a really good relationship with food you know with your um your body as well and and the way that you um you know you you view yourself your confidence in yourself um that can be quite damaging going from one extreme and completely to another so Mm -hmm. I think there's definitely massive value in being in a mindset of of going and being guided through this situation you know and changing and adapting your lifestyle so actually I think again when we're thinking about people being busy they forget about things like the gym or activity things get colder and wetter outside especially where I'm from and in England it's 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 cold it's horrible and actually for you you're on the opposite scale actually things are uh, I guess yeah I guess things are getting warmer where you are do you find though that's actually maybe even a positive step for you because I feel like we're almost we're reading from the same script here and in terms of we're, we're talking about the same lifestyle choices that people need to make but especially here in the UK because we are not mo- motivated by by hot weather or, or sunshine or, or spring coming everything is baggy clothes and everything's cold and you know people might want to come into Christmas and and just like just take everything really easy and then when they get to January that's where the motivation tends to kick in Mm -hmm. how does that work for people on your side of the planet yeah so for us right now it's a spring it's gonna be summer in literally one month I think or like a month and a half something like that Mm. obviously I think summertime gives you that little push that little motivation because you know it's summertime I'm gonna go to the beach beach I want to wear that nice swimwear or that nice swimsuit I want to look nice, you know, be able to wear shorts because I want to show my legs, show my hard work. But it's a little bit hard to say right now, just because the weather keeps changing every single day, that right now really? it feels like winter. It doesn't even feel like spring at all. So I feel like even now it's meant to be a spring, but it's more like winter. People still mm-hmm. don't feel motivated because it's so cold in the mornings. It's so wet in the mornings. You don't just, you don't feel like getting up. You don't feel like going to the gym because it's so freaking cold. So I think like, yeah, it should be the other way around, but it's not yeah. just because the weather, yeah. it's like, it's not helping. I mean, it's not an excuse, but it's just not really helping too much. Wow. Yeah. That's such a different perspective though, in terms of my assumption would be if I put myself into to sort of, you know, your world and you, you know, where you are right now in New Zealand, I, I would be thinking about maybe even the clients wanting to to get looking better for the for the Barbie on the beach. Mm. I guess you guys do that there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but mm. yeah, it just I think like I still get messages from my clients saying like, you know, I'm really struggling to wake up in the mornings to go gym just because it's so cold or it's wow. raining and I just don't feel like going. I'm like, yeah, I know it's raining. I know it's cold, but you just have to get it done. Like you, if you know the morning is the only time that you can get it done, make it work. Yes, it's hard before you go to the gym because it's cold. You don't feel like it. Yeah. But once you're there, you're going to feel amazing. Once you finish your workout, you're going to feel like yeah. So that's always something to keep in mind. But let's share some tips that can help them stay on track during this yeah. events festive season. I know you have some tips. I've got some tips yeah. right here. So let's share this with them because I know if you're listening, you're probably waiting for this right now. So I think the tip number one that I have for you, it's to plan a hit. Planning, it's literally everything. And this is something, again, we tell you guys all the time. Planning is literally everything. Like, if you know, let's say this weekend, you have a few events, you have a work party on Friday, then you have a reunion with your family on Saturday, then you have a reunion with your friends on Sunday. That's like three events in one weekend. That's pretty like full on. Something that I would suggest, okay, plan ahead. I know that Friday, we're going to be going to this restaurant. Saturday, we're going to be doing a barbecue. Sunday, we're going to go to this restaurant. 
look at the menu, see what the options are. Don't just go there and then stress about, oh my gosh, there's so many things. I don't know what to order. Plan ahead so you know exactly what things are the healthiest, or like the best option for you to have. And then during the day, have your meals as usual. There's no need for you to starve yourself for that barbecue or to not eat anything the whole night just because you want to look amazing the next day. Planning is going to change everything. So don't stress too much. If you have time, plan, even if it's on a Friday morning, even if it's on Saturday morning. But as long as you have a game plan for that day, that's going to make you feel better. And that's going to ensure that you don't have that stress and that you're not overthinking too much and thinking, oh my gosh, you know, eating out every single day for this weekend is going to make me put on 10 kgs. Like that's not going to happen. It's just one weekend, relax. One weekend is not going to change anything. I promise. As long as you make Mm -hmm. smart choices, that's the best, best thing you can do right now. What's something else you'll suggest? I think, yeah, as you've said there as well, like planning meals before you go out, et cetera. But actually, yeah, planning is, there's so much with planning. Um, mm-hmm. I think it just goes such a, such a long way. But um, yeah, we need to think about scheduling as well. I think that's definitely a part of it. It needs yeah. to be in the diary, um, yeah. you know, definitely making um, you know, making good use of time the morning, although it's, you know, it's not great being up that, that early, we have to kind of get slightly uncomfortable with, with, uh, well, comfortable with being uncomfortable, but also really having that definitive and specific goal as well. Like goals go a long way. You need to really define what it is that you want to achieve between now and and Christmas and also what you want Christmas to look like Mm -hmm. so I know here it's probably harder because you are going to start getting warmer weather but here we're actually getting colder weather and this is the time where people generally start to reduce you know their um their neat or their you know um the activity that they do outside of exercise they become more sedentary because it's cold so I think we need to have those mini goals in place to help um having that that clear target to stay motivated um and again the schedule with with the workouts if it needs to be shorter in time and it needs to be more frequent just so that we really maximize the morning you know, not everyone's going to have a clear hour and a half first thing before work. If you start work at nine and, you know, you need to be out the house by 7.30 normally or, or you know, whatever that your commute's like or whether you work from home, there's, you know, you've got to get ready, you've got to shower, you've got to, you know, have your, your food or your meals planned out for the day. <clears throat> really important to schedule these things in and actually, mm. Daniela, doing things the night before as well really help. Yep. Having your gym kit ready by the door, um, knowing what you're going to have for the next day. So you just take that sort of exhaustion out of your mind and, and having to think on the spot and, and responding to hunger on the go. Um, yeah, just committing and just being finding that consistency within that schedule and the shorter workouts. So, you know, half an hour, maybe you, you do the half an hour and it's part of your routine that you do every every day mm-hmm. just just to kind of get and and get more bang for your buck when it comes to your actual regime your workout regime rather than trying to find an hour and a half like twice a week mm. to cram everything in that might have worked earlier in the uh, earlier in the year or you know over the summer for example for us here you know when when you could go to the gym after work but but now it's just you know things have changed <laughs> yeah and also if you like make it a non-negotiable like if you know you're going to be busy especially you know the weeks leading up to Christmas if you have like two weeks off or three weeks off from work make it a non-negotiable to get your workouts done if you're gonna be going away somewhere and then that place doesn't have a gym you can still do like home workouts you can still go for yeah. a just go for a walk but make it your non-negotiable okay I'm gonna plan my week I know I won't have time this and this day but I'm gonna ensure to get my workouts done let's just say Monday Wednesday and Thursday even if before yeah. you were used to getting your workouts done five times a week but this time you mm. only have time for three times a week three times it's better than nothing so write mm. it down put it in your calendar and I will suggest I highly highly suggest get it done in the morning 
Because if you are away on a holiday, you will most likely do things during the day. So yeah. you know you won't get it done later at nighttime or afternoon or whatever. It's easier to get it done first in the morning. Again, it should be your non-negotiable. Get up, get it done. Even if it's just 30 minutes, like Richard said, it doesn't matter how long. But just get some activity, some training done in your day. And then you have the rest of your day to enjoy your vacation or do whatever it is that you have to do. Go to work or whatever. Yeah. But just yeah. planning ahead, having that on your schedule and changing things if you have to. You can always go back to five days a week after Christmas or whenever you go back to your normal routine. That's yeah. not going to change anything at all. And something yeah. else I think that can help you, it's portion control. Because mm. portion control is something that makes a huge difference. Sometimes I feel like we feel that because we have free we have food available for free. We have this available for free. Free mm -hmm. sometimes equals like, I need to have more of this. You know, it's free. <laughs> I need to make the most yeah. out of this and like enjoy everything. Like I feel in my plate. Yeah, but that's mm -hmm. then only going to make you feel bloated. That's going to make you feel yuck yeah. because you maybe ate too much. You were indulging too much. Why do you do that to yourself? Like go there, enjoy. If you want to have that cake, have that cake. But this doesn't yeah. mean you need to have three plates of cake or the whole cake just have your portion enjoy it enjoy every single yeah. bite and then you're gonna feel mm -hmm. good and you won't feel guilty because the more you have it you're gonna enjoy at that moment and then you're gonna be like oh why did I have that much ice cream or why did I have the those two plates of you know whatever food was available focus on your portion control and I can guarantee that's gonna make a huge difference and it's one of those yeah. things that yes it's easier say than done but if you don't do it how is it gonna help you how is that going to make a change for you so you have to practice it and you have to do it every single time because that's something yeah that's something that will change everything for you so practice your portion control and you're going to hear this from us every single podcast but portion control is literally everything 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 yeah yeah I agree with you there actually and again it's having that shift in mindset so you know, I could talk here actually about um, maybe alcohol, for example, and mm. you know when uh, people have like unlimited amounts, and you you know, I would use this term before almost like drinking as if the bar is going to get up and run away. Like <laughs> that is yeah. not the way to do it. Like enjoy yourself, be merry. Um, but yeah, you know, I think. Thinking about alcohol itself, you know, there are options. Um, you want to have a clear mindset as well. Excuse me, especially if you are still working, there's going to be countless events night after night. Pick your days, you know, maybe maybe even think about limiting how much you're, you are going to have in terms of alcohol. Like don't completely cut it out if you know, if you find that there are certain situations that you would like to enjoy something, there are also lower calorie options. Yeah. You know, thinking about um, how you have your alcohol with um, mixers as well. So opting for like, you know, diet options or even like on the rocks, um, you know, there are adaptations we can make when it comes to you know, enjoying alcohol moderately and, you know, not being excessive about it because at the end of the day, you're only going to feel worse. You're going to feel rotten and quite often you, it's going to affect your sleep as well. Mm. Um, if you haven't had a good night's sleep, you're more likely to want to overindulge the next day. Yeah. It does affect your, you know, your hormone, for example, um, just purely by not having that sleep. You are you're more likely to to overindulge the next day again you're just setting yourself up you know for <laughs> yeah yeah so just be mm. mindful basically when it comes to the alcohol and um yeah I think similarly with that you know being choosing other options where possible when it comes to socializing so mm -hmm. if you have the opportunity to do something active you know, you're meeting up with friends, it doesn't always have to involve alcohol. And, mm. you know, there are other ways, you know, you can go and do, especially in the UK, we can go and do like ice skating, for example, or, you know, going for a walk. Um, there are ways that you can kind of, we have something here actually called Winter Wonderland, for example, over in London, in, in Hyde <laughs> nice. Park, that's really fun. 
Um, mm. But, you know, you can use the opportunity to, to go, right, you know what we're going to do is we're going to go and have a walk around London. We'll grab some coffees and, and we'll get moving. And, and um, you know, I think there are opportunities to create, you know, socialization, um, you know, active yeah. socialization. Uh, one, one of the um, previous places that I was employed at before, before I became the girl boss <laughs> the um I used to work in a physiotherapy clinic and actually for our Christmas party we would or, and our boss was really hot on this we'd always do an activity mm-hmm. and there's something in suggesting that with your workplace as well is doing an activity which is active so whether that's like bouldering you know like the rock climb indoor rock climbing or you know it's it's going out and and playing a game or doing bowling or something there are ways to take things away you can still have you know like for bowling for example you can have alcohol as part of that but yeah be you know it it's not just a constant drinking game <laughs> yeah so you, you know what i mean yeah yeah i feel like alcohol some people have this mindset like if I want to have fun I need to have some alcohol I yeah. sorry I need I need to be drinking if I want to be able to socialize I need to have that alcohol in me if I want to feel good and have a good time but I feel like we need to change that mindset that alcohol it's yeah. a must if you want to have fun alcohol it has to be present if you want to enjoy that time with your friends family or co-workers it doesn't yeah. have to be like that it's only like that if you want to make it like that if you yeah. feel like alcohol is a must and that's in your mindset, then you're going to make alcohol a must. And then you're going to be drinking, you're going to be drunk, maybe too drunk. And then the next day you're going to be like, oh, why did I drink too much? And you're going to have the headache. And then like you say, like you're going to feel like eating too much because your energy levels are going to be so low. You won't make it to your training. You're going to be eating McDonald's maybe for breakfast. And then you're going to have KFC for lunch, you know, just something nice and quick. But nowadays there's so many alcohol, like low calorie alcohol options or like non-alcoholic. Yeah options that yeah. still taste really good it still yeah. makes you feel like you're drinking something but you don't necessarily have to drink too much like change that mindset like that's something i'm telling um, you i mean i don't like alcohol so same, same here, it, actually. yeah <laughs> i think it's easier yeah, for yeah. us to say that i know like let's yeah. say yeah yeah you know it's, it's interesting yeah, yeah because with the with the alcohol thing um i feel like when I started to see progress in the gym, for example, and I was really like driven on, on that progress, I felt like that doing that would, you know, create a dent in my progress. It would, it would bring me a setback. Right. And Mm. is that why you kind of refrain from, from having it as a part of your life? But um, yeah, like you said, there's so many low calorie options and, and even like fun, non-alcoholic drinks. Have you tried kombucha? I love kombucha. I have it pretty much, not every day, but I have yeah. it quite often. Yeah, I love it. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. like that in the summertime. Yeah, it's nice. I, I always put some ice. Ice, kombucha, it's always with me. But um, okay. I just quickly want to talk about like one decline in particular that she's with me yes. right now. And yes. she's someone that she used to drink all the, every single, pretty much every single weekend because she's a very social mm. person. So she would go to a friend's house or to a dinner with her friends or whatever and there was always alcohol around and I asked her like do you actually enjoy drinking like do you feel like you have to drink and she's like actually I don't but I feel like if I want to have fun I need to or to feel included I need to have that alcohol and I was like okay how about I challenge you this weekend because I know you're gonna go out this weekend go there have fun but don't feel like you need to drink like if you really really feel like drinking then have a drink but if you don't want to drink say no to your friends don't drink it just have that water with you that cooks you or whatever drink you want to have but I can guarantee you can still have a good time with, without alcohol she's like okay like let me try it. let's see let's see what happens and then the next week yeah it was Monday I was like so how was your weekend how was you drinking or not drinking she's like actually it was really good I didn't drink well I only had one drink before I would have plenty of drinks and then the next day I will just feel like hangover and like you know Mm. too tired to do things but this time I decided not to drink because I didn't want to drink I felt really good the next day I went to the gym the next day and it was just a really good experience and I was like this just shows you don't necessarily (laughs) see you don't necessarily need to have alcohol in your system to have fun or be able to socialize like you can still have fun without that much alcohol in your blood so maybe that's something for you guys. Like if you're listening to this or watching this and you feel like yeah. I need to have alcohol, or like I must have alcohol every single time I go out. 
just try just give it a try if you don't try you will never know just try to be a little bit sober you don't have to be completely sober but instead of having 20 drinks just go for three or four drinks you know change it up a little bit and see see how you feel see how that makes you feel and also see how you feel the next day and the following day because drinking affects your whole week not just the next day it's pretty much that alcohol in your blood and your system for a few days so think wisely (laughs) Think wisely with the choices that you're making. Don't just feel pressure to do something that you don't want to do. Mm, and I think massively. Yeah. Yeah. Alcohol, especially I feel like in this country, I feel like it's every culture in every country, but I feel alcohol in New Zealand, alcohol is a really big part of New Zealand. I feel like wow. people, yeah, when people socialize, there's always, I can guarantee, there's always, always, always alcohol around. There's always alcohol present and people just like sit down on a circle or whatever and they just drink and drink and drink and drink and drink so I I just thought that was something that people did in the UK I feel like things have changed but here there's been you know definitely a massive drink culture Mm -hmm. um and I think it's interesting because I think the more you gravitate to using fitness as a form of self-care and you know like confidence building and you know feeling like happy for the for this body that you are working on and this mindset as well look I just feel like people are starting to change here and I think they realize there is great detriment I mean like all the things you've mentioned but you know affecting your sleep your productivity at work the next day um you know you might actually do some really embarrassing things when drunk as well (laughs) so you want to be able to but also isn't there some pleasure in enjoying those social events and actually remembering photographs or Mm. scenarios or pictures or videos or remembering those times with a clear mindset as opposed to kind of thinking what happened yeah something that I I will never understand is why people drink to the point that they don't remember anything like how was your night oh actually I don't know I don't remember what do you mean you don't remember I don't know I had too much drinks I'm like why do you do that to yourself like is that something you want to keep doing is that something that you feel like you're going to be proud of when you're a little bit older Mm -hmm. and you know talk to your grandkids or whatever is that I don't know I just feel like obviously it's up to you do whatever you want to do but I just personally I don't see the point of getting too drunk to the point that you just don't remember one thing from last night that's just yeah that's for me that's not worth it it's not worth it at all and I feel like yeah something that goes along with alcohol or another tip that can help you stay on track during this Christmas festive season is just staying hydrated and staying hydrated I mean it's something again we always tell you guys by staying hydrated especially now it's going to be key because sometimes we can confuse hunger with thirst maybe you haven't been drinking too much water that day because you've been so busy running around the house doing things you have people coming over or whatever and then you feel like you're hungry but maybe you're not hungry you're thirsty so learn how do you differentiate between the two being hungry and then just being thirsty so always try to have your water bottle with you if you can or just have one glass of water every hour if you can but just make sure you stay hydrated and if you're gonna be drinking also stay hydrated in between drinks because if you're not hydrated you're not gonna pay attention to how many glasses you're having how many glasses of alcohol you're having or how many drinks you're having but if you take your little breaks in between alcohol and just have one glass of water or two glasses of water it's gonna help you stay on track it's gonna help you ensure that you don't over drink that you don't have too many drinks and it's just gonna make you feel better the next day because you're gonna be hydrating remember alcohol dehydrates you water hydrates you so you're gonna be like balancing that thing and yeah just making Mm. you feel better yeah no good really good tips actually and it's interesting because I don't think we plan to really talk as much about alcohol but it Mm. it's definitely for some people yeah. It's a big part of the season, all the celebrations and Christmas itself. Um, and just kind of coming back really to your why as well, like really thinking about what is this journey? What does it mean to you? What is your fitness journey? And hopefully that can help provide some some motivation during these challenging times 
So always revisit those mini goals. Um, and another thing that I guess comes in with this, with all the repetitive, you know, because it's a burnout is real as well with, with socialization. And I think it's really important for us to think about rest as well. Mm. Having yeah. a day, you know, it. we're not saying to you, right, you've got to eat like this throughout okay I know we've we've talked about being quite flexible with your with your meals and and ways to 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 manage things <clears throat> and the training as well the ways to fit that in but many of you still have work to go to many of you still have families to look after many of you still have you know other ac activities that that form part of your week um so really think about how you work rest into that as well rest and recovery so you know don't say yes to absolutely every everything out there allow yourself to say yeah. no sometimes it, which i think is so important as well because i've you know i would say that in my younger years i'd always be quite you know driven to to staying how can i say like to never say no oh my god i've got to go out i've got to do this i've got to do yeah. that and actually i think having time to do nothing is is massively important to your mental health as well you need time to switch off yeah I think Any saying, last words from you Daniela yeah two things number one I think saying no learning how to say no it's a big one because if you don't mm -hmm. learn to have those barriers to so put those barriers it's not because you don't want to see that person but remember you always have to think about yourself first do I feel rested enough? Do I need more rest? Do I really want to go to this event? Do I really want to go to this party? If you want, if you truly want to go, obviously go. But don't feel like you have to say yes just because you're on a, if you say no, you're going to disappoint the other person or you, you know, mm. whatever it goes, goes through your mind. Like it's okay to say no. So we need to start learning to say no. And my last tip that I will give you guys, I know we talk about portion control, staying hydrated, alcohol, training, planning. But the main, I think, yeah, the main and the biggest tip for me will be enjoy. <laughs> make sure you enjoy yes we have given you all these tips but at the end of the day christmas it's only once a year new year's is only once a year so make sure that especially if you only see your family around this time of the year take some time to truly enjoy that time with them take some time to truly enjoy some time with yourself as well there's nothing better than enjoying that alone time enjoy 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 have fun if for whatever reason you were not able to stay on track there's always a tomorrow to try again. So don't punish yourself. Don't make yourself feel too guilty or too much or don't give yourself too much stress. There's always a tomorrow to try again. If today was not a good day, if yesterday was not the best, tomorrow try again and try a little bit better, you know, try to do a little bit better. But my main thing will be, yeah, just enjoy. It's the festive season. Don't be too hard on yourself, but at the same time, don't be too relaxed. Like <laughs> there's like limits, there's, you know, there's like something in between that. Enjoy, do the best that you can. And I think, yeah, that's the best advice we can give you right now. Daniela, absolutely love that. Thank you so much for for closing this topic, actually, with just such value as well. Like, honestly, guys, we're here as your coaches. Um, if you need us to help you on your journey, reach out to us. Um, this has been the Girl Boss Method. I've been Richu Bra and Daniela Del Carpio, as well as guest. I will leave the... Uh, where you can find us both as well to make contact on via Instagram, send us a message and we'll be happy to help.